Because you clicked on this video, I am going to assume that you've probably already heard about the beef between Megan Thee Stallion and Nicki Minaj. Both women have dropped singles, and from what I can understand, both singles are doing well on different charts. So let's get into some background. Megan released a song on her upcoming studio album, Hiss, and in the song, Megan came for those who basically came for her during her court battle with Tory Lanez. As we all know, Megan faced a lot of negative criticism and viciousness from Tory fans and those in the rap industry. I can only assume that Nikki sided with Tory over Megan, which is why Megan hit Nikki with the Megan's Law lyric in her song. For those of you who do not know what Megan's Law is, a real um, Megan's Law is a real law that was passed in 1996 that require s offenders to register as an s offender so that the public is aware that there are s offenders in their area the the megan that the law was named after was unalived by a man who was an s offender and who lived in the same area as little megan but because her family did not know that there was an S offender in their area, they were unable to protect little Megan and, and, you know, little Megan ended up becoming a victim. So that's how, that's the whole thing behind the Megan's law. Now, um, for those of you guys who may be having a hard time putting two and two together, how does that line re relate to Nicki Minaj? Well, Nicki Minaj, I think we all know Nicki Minaj's husband is also a registered s offender okay all right so for me the beef between megan and nikki is a clear cut example of self-worth and self-esteem let me explain so self-worth is the value that one place on themselves and the belief that they have that they are worthy of things such as love respect and consideration to name a few now, self-esteem, on the other hand, is the level of confidence that one may have in their worth and our abilities such as physical appearance, accomplishments, capabilities, or their perceived success. So before I get into explaining whether or not one can have self-esteem and not self-worth, let's examine a few things about Megan that I think many don't understand. So when you look at Megan and what she's been through, you have to wonder how can Megan still be so confident? How can she still be holding her head up high? How can she still be continuing on with her life after the embarrassment that she endured with the public learning about her sexual partner history or after, you know, her public fallout with her best friend over a Negro like Tory Lanez, like, ugh. you know, so how can she feel still feel comfortable mingling among those in the rap industry after putting a black man behind bars for playing with her life? How can after all of what she's been through still embrace her sexiness and be unapologetic about it and still be so confident? Well, let me tell you why. It takes a lot of effort, love of self, self-realization, confidence, and healing to become a 27-year-old, self-worth having, high self-esteem having black woman. I hate to say it, but the black community is just not used to seeing black women in certain spaces that have nothing to do with struggle, hard times, down on your luck, you know, things like that. Hence, this is why black, the black woman soft life and the black women luxury in luxury offends so many people. Because people are used to seeing black women, you know, when they've been through what Megan have been through, they've lost faith. Their hope is gone, their confidence is gone, egos bruised, you know, and just their overall perception of self and self-worth, self-value, uh, self-esteem is 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 gone. And so because of that, that a lot of times you'll see women 
respond in certain ways because of those things are missing. And so, you know, they a lot of times end up settling. This is why, um, you know, Megan's confidence, women who have Megan's confidence is frightening and offensive to many. Let's look at Lori, uh, Lori Harvey. Lori Harvey is a perfect, perfect example of this because she moves literally in silence and bothers nobody. But she still receives a lot of hate for no reason. All right. This woman is grown. The men that she is, you know, that she dates are grown. They make a choice to date her. They date her. It works out or it doesn't. And when it doesn't, now everybody's coming for Lori. That is a prime example. People cannot stand to see a black woman, beautiful, confident, not giving a damn about what people think or say about, you know, whatever, and still live in her essence still be able to carry herself as if she's worth gazillions of dollars because in many you know black people's eyes when a woman has been through whatever they're supposed to not have the confidence they're supposed to be humble they're supposed to think that they ain't nothing they're supposed to think that there's no way that they can come out of whatever it is that they came out of and I get it that's an old mind frame because you know that's really how it was You know, uh, for a lot, especially back, you know, back before uh, women in general even really had a voice, you know, even had a say in anything. That's how it was. And unfortunately, things are changing, you know. And another thing, it's funny to see, you know, so many in the black community have so much love and so much um welcomeness and so much understanding when it comes to your sukihanas when it comes to your sexy 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 reds when it comes to you know uh christian uh rock right krishan rock everybody is oh well you know they've been through this they've been through that oh this and that you know and if you notice none of the rappers is out here talking about them none of the rappers is out here you know putting them in songs or whatever not unless they got beef with blue face or whatever but you know, none of that is going on. These rappers, a lot of people in the industry, they embrace Suki Hani. Um, you know, they don't shade her or say the little things like that. They don't do it. The black community also do too because Suki wouldn't be where Suki is if that was not the case. But someone like Lori Harvey, it's like, you know, oh, well, no, she's a pariah. No, she's this, she's that. But hold on, y'all embrace and do songs with Suki Hana and Sexy Red though. But then in your song, you want to throw shade at Lori. That's interesting. I think uh, Drake got a song out right now with Sexy Red. Right now. But then he's also shaded, you know, Megan in his song. Um, and he's also shaded um, Lori Harvey. So to me, that tells me everything that I need to know. Black people will accept you when you are a Suki Hana. When you are a Sexy Red. When you, you know, when you, when you, and when in your mind, your worth is, is limited, you know, in your mind, you don't really have that much confidence. So you just do whatever to get, you know, to, to just be friends and be with whomever, right? That's, that's, that's what people are used to seeing, unfortunately, not all, not all, not all, but it, that's, that's what we see. Okay. This is why your Krishan uh rocks in your sukihanas all of them are so embraced but yet um lori harvey is not and she does not do near or say near the amount of things that these women do and say all right moving on though moving on so um can you have high self-esteem but low self-worth i say yes because you can feel good about how you perform in your career or on your job Or about the talents you have, but not genuinely accept certain aspects of yourself. For example, let's use Nikki, for example. Nikki can be the so-called, you know, queen of rap, but still not like how she looks for not uh, or not like some of the poor decisions or choices that she's made in the past that may still haunt her today. Uh, AKA, you know, the choice that she made to marry the man that she married. Um, 
or not like that she is aging because the aging aspect is something that all women must learn how to deal with in a positive way. Um, so the self-worth part of it all is that Nikki may believe that she is the queen of rap because, you know, her music le legacy speaks for itself. But on self-esteem side of things, she may resent herself for getting a BBL because let's just be honest, you guys, that BBL is not aging well. All right. She may also resent the fact that she made a, a horrible PR stunt to her brand uh, because she, you know, disastrously, she married a man uh, and had a child with a man that is a registered S offender, which is something that Nikki can never live down. She can never downplay. She can't pay to have it to make it go away. None of that. She's got to live with that. And because of that, she will forever have to defend this man because he can't defend himself. He tried that already a few months back, uh, you know, and we see what happened with that. So, so Nikki had to jump in her masculine, be the man and continue to defend her man. Now, this is why I think Nicki Minaj will forever have to answer to you know that decision that she did that she made to marry him and you know have a child with him and it's got to be exhausting to keep fighting that battle like who wants to continuously fight the same battle year in and year out where you have to be you can't even be a woman you got to jump into your masculine like she did and spiral out of control like she did just to protect your man it should be the other way around. But see, he can't protect himself because he's on, you know, probation or whatever it is. And there are certain things that he can't do. I don't even think he can be on, he can have a social media or even be online. Um, so that's a whole nother story. But, um, you know, this is why I think that Megan's law line ate Nikki up and continues to eat her up because she is still spiraling out of control several days later. All right. So, you know, that's just an example. But lastly, what I think women can learn from this is that good old nice, nasty response that I think Megan did oh so well. And, you know, people like Nene Leakes, Phaedra Parks, Omarosa are a few that, I, that are in my top five for being able to respond to situations in a nice, nasty way where, you know, all they got to do is hit them with a one liner to get them together and you know they're still able to um you know still able to be classy still still able to be calm and collective and cool which is what I think Megan has been able to do during this whole thing now at the end of the day I don't like to see any two black women fighting each other or trash talking each other but I do understand that part of setting boundaries is speaking up for yourself and it's also taking up for yourself and letting people know you know that you know in a nice nasty way right but keeping it classy that um you know they they can't just they can't do you any kind of way and that you know you are not to be played with and that you know you will defend yourself if you have to so I'm all for all of that because I know, you know, that's what I would do as well. Now, am I a rapper? Absolutely not. I'm not a rapper. So, of course, I would do it a different way. This is why I say the lesson to be learned that um, from this all is that there are ways that you can defend yourself, you know, which I like to call the nice, nasty way, you know, um, as a black woman who work, you know, in corporate or work wherever or have to, you know, commune with different uh, groups of people. Uh, I find that there are times I do have to set people straight in a nice, nasty way because people will try you. They will, you know, they will push your boundaries. They will try to see, you know, uh, what they can get away with doing. And sometimes, you know, if you're in a work environment, you can't, you know, just jump into a rap battle and cuss them out. Absolutely not. You have to know how to hit them with something with one of them nice, nasty liners. Right. You know, so, um, that's all I have for you guys. Tell me what you think about this whole thing. Are you guys, do you think Megan was in the right, in the wrong? Do you think Megan won? 
Did you do you think um, Nicki Minaj won? Is it time for Nicki to you know to hang it up? Do you think Nicki even have room to speak on anybody's situation as it relates to you know who they're who they're having sex with when she's literally laid up and having children with a man who is a registered S offender? So, um, you know, or do you think that Nicki could talk about anybody's worth or self esteem when? Again, she's her self-esteem uh, can be questioned because, again, you know, she did this woman had when, she, you know, when she married this man, she probably could have had her pick of anybody, but she picked him. And so many would say that does speak to self-esteem and self-worth. Um, so you guys tell me what you think. Tell me your thoughts. I uh, would love to uh, hear them. And I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe. And thank you guys for watching. Bye.